Hey, Pep Talks family, PP Plan family. Um, today we are going to be talking with a very close friend and cousin, actually, of mine about the topic of safety versus risk. Um, and just gonna just get into it. As an introduction, she is from North Carolina. North Carolina is the home state. Um, she is a wife, a mom of four, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, and a U.S. Air Force veteran and now a realtor. So we're going to introduce and bring in my cousin, Renee Lucas. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so with the introduction that I forget anything, um, I tried to cover a no, lot. No, that sums it up well, thank who you. I knew. Okay, cool. Just wanted to double check. So. Definitely, I know you were saying before earlier when we talked, definitely you are a jack of all trades um, and being able to have your hands in a lot of different things. But um, with that, just to kind of carry off of the introduction a bit, tell us more about you, um, a little of who you are, what you do and what you offer. Okay, so as you said, um, I currently am a real estate agent um, in the state of North Carolina. Um, I love what I do. It's busy, but I love it. Um, I am a mom um, of four. Uh, I have three adult children and, and one uh, that's still home with us. And I have a husband and we uh, share life here in North Carolina that we enjoy. We love to RV. We love uh, to, um, for the most part, just enjoy life. For me, I have dibbled and dabbled in a lot of things as you said uh i do acrylic painting i have also um been an entrepreneur and with the artwork that i like to do i produce clothing and handbags and different things like that but um this topic is so appropriate today because um sometimes you have to look at the risk versus the safety as to how you want to you know the path that you want to take in your life Absolutely. Again, definitely one to do it all. I actually, I didn't forget, but it slipped my memory that you even do the, the painting and things. That's always fun. You didn't do the one behind you, did you? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Well, getting into the topic then, we'll um, just asking the first question. With all that you've done and all that you're planning to do, are you one to play it safe or are you a risk taker? Ooh, well, um, I think that as I age, I am falling more into the safe category, but definitely as a younger person, risk all day, probably more than I should have um, in my life in a lot of different ways, um, especially career-wise. Um, you know, growing up, you just don't know certain things, um, mm -hmm. and then you don't have the responsibilities and obligations that you have as you get older. So that willingness to take a risk is certainly there. It was there for me as a younger person, which led into me being a jack of all trades and, and you know, wanting to explore and see what this was about and that was about. Right. And, and it, you know, it served its purpose in my life. But as I said, as I get older, I realized that I probably need to look more on the safety, uh, take more safe safety precautions, uh, especially where my career is uh, involved. Gotcha. And it's actually a great point that you make because I, um, I'm still telling everybody, I just turned 30 last year. So I'm in the 30 club now. Um, but I'm noticing that that's even for me becoming to be a thing that it's like where I would be like, yeah, just go and do it. Now I'm like, wait, let me really think about this a little bit. Yeah. So it's like, I can definitely say I do agree and believe that is a thing as you get older. And I actually asked this question on Facebook the other day too, and someone commented and said the same thing. It's like, as you get older, you do tend to want to fall along that those lines of just being a little safe. And I think it's mostly just being certain and yes. definitely think it's the thing as you said of being a wife and a mom as you have other obligations and responsibilities and things it's like you want to make sure that the nest is safe at the same time um, right but, because when you're younger um it's just you know the lack of maturity and then things that you just don't think about like you don't think about 
a lot of times, like when I would take a risk, I would already be inside of that thing, inside of that risk before I would realize, like, mm -hmm. and begin to start thinking about it, like, whoa, what was I doing? <laughs> gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now it, the the movement into that is is way slower, and I'm trying to look at all, address everything before I even move. And and sometimes it's surprising to me because when I was younger, I never thought I would be in a place where I would even be concerned about safety. Gotcha. And I, I think that is truly again the thing for me that I'm as much as I want to stay on the side of taking the risk at any point at any time that is something that I, again that I'm noticing that I am being challenged with and it's like let's plan a little a little deeper think about it a little differently um fortunately I think one of the things is like my mom and you know how family is like oh Jerry, you ain't got kids you know and you know those things I can still be a little bit more riskier because of that but it's still just the thing I and I guess it's because when you start to think like long term like where do I see myself in um 10 15 years as opposed to because for me even thinking about jobs and stuff I'm very flighty sometimes like I'll start today and be like no nope, peace out this ain't what I want no more um <laughs> so yeah. it does change when you do start to think like hmm well what do I really you know what would I really want to do long term these things that I definitely wow. I think there is a, a certain element to risk takers, uh, regardless of age. Uh, I think risk takers tend to look at life a little different in the sense that, like for me, uh, for example, I'm just now realizing at my age that I'm really like non-committal. Um, probably the, the only thing that I've been as committed to in my life has been my, my spouse and my children. Um, and that seemed to have come easy for me, but like working, that's why I'm a jack of all trades. Cause when I get bored, which usually happens pretty quickly with a job or I don't like the way it's going, I will take that risk in a heartbeat and say, you know what? Done with this. Yeah. And I don't even have anything lined up. So the, the risk yep. <laughs> and, and all that come with that. Um, is there. And I think that part of me st is still very much present. But I have to quiet that part of me a lot because I feel like it drives me to, to be like a nomadic person mm -hmm. where I can kind of be over here and over there and, and all over the place. And for the lifestyle that I have, that's not, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's not going to work for the yeah. lifestyle that I have. But the draw is still there to 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 kind of be risky in a in a way that it's it can be selfish, I think, mm -hmm. because I've also built a life to be a wife and a mom. Um, so maybe if I was single, I would be living a different life. But as a married person, I feel obligated to be still um, mm -hmm. in a way that that core of me doesn't necessarily want to all the time. Gotcha. And that actually leads me to the next point of using discernment. How do you determine um, when you need to take a risk and when you need to play it safe? Um, for me, I think I look at the overall impact of my family. It, it keeps coming back to family for me. So I may take be more of a risk taker when it comes to employment, career. But I also have a cushion here because I have a spouse that has a, you know, a great job. So the concern for money may not be as great for me. Um, so I will, I know for me, I'm, I will take a risk where it is an individual thing faster than I will. Something that I feel like, well, not that the finances me working or not working won't impact my husband. What I'm what I'm trying to say is if I'm at a job and they're getting on my nerves at that job and it's not working for me and it's stressing me out, I will go ahead and take that risk and say, you know what, I gotta get out of here. I'll find something else. Whereas that may not be the case if I say, well, I just want to move out of North Carolina altogether. Well, that's gonna impact my whole family. And if everybody's not on board with that, yeah. <clears throat> 
I'm kind of forced to play it safe in, in some regards. Yep. That if that makes sense, sense. I think that, no, it does. It does. It definitely makes a lot of sense. And I think it definitely, with that, brings it into perspective, as you said, especially being a wife and being a mom of having to think about how, just recapping of how that decision affects everybody as a whole. Um, which, going back to one of your last points, you also said of just, just for other people who may be watching and listening to is that um, I think those are the things and the differences that you have to think about. It's like, okay, are you single? Are you with someone? And not even just, I don't even think just as far as just to say just married, but are you committed in your relationship? Maybe you're dating or whatever, and you still have to consider some of those things. Of, wow. Ooh, how does this affect them? Because for me, I'll say that even for me, that's affecting how I, I even want to entertain or intermingle with people right now because and you know personal conversations we share that I'm planning on moving to London and it's like do I want to get involved with someone right now and they turn serious and then you know because those are things you're gonna have to think about later mm-hmm. like how does this work as far as you're not moving just to the next city over or the next state over like you're going overseas so it definitely would say it's a thing of having to you know really think about how it affects so now that was a good point so um so now the next point of question that i had was um as it relates to either now being a realtor or maybe you can share maybe like when you first decided to go to the air force um the question was was when did it become clear to you to just dive in and not second guess yourself so in those moments you ha- the, that you did take those risks, when did it become clear? It's just like, no, this is what I want to do, or this is what I need to do in, in this moment. I feel really connected to self. Um, my my inner self, my intuition, it just kind of knows um, when it's time for me to move and when seasons change in my life. And I've known that for many years about myself. And even growing up um, in the small town that we did, I knew watching my family members, you know, no shade to them, but I just understood like, I don't want to live here forever and do the same thing forever. That would drive me nuts. So for me, it was always just in me to, to, to explore and that curiosity just kind of drove me. And so when I did leave and I went into the air force, it was nothing holding me, you know, to Lexington. I mean, my family was there, yes, but I understood they would always be there because yeah. if that weren't the case, they would have, you know, they would have moved by now. Yeah. So I understood they would always be there, but I just had this longing to explore the world and it just drove me to go. And I was like, what? I don't really have anything to lose at this point. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't have any kind of obligations, responsibilities. I didn't have my own place. Um, I did have a car, but you know. I didn't really have anything holding me there. So I was okay with just getting out of town. And I know that was one of the best things I could have done in my life. Um, And I also understood the season was up for me in Lexington simply because nothing was working out anymore. Everything that I was trying to do to remain there, it just wasn't working for me. And that voice in my head was just getting louder and louder, like, just go, just, just do it. And I did, and it yielded me a lifestyle where I was able to explore because being in the military, we moved quite a bit and we lived overseas and we lived in different, you know, states. And so to have that opportunity to um, engage with life in such a way, I think that helped me to understand that it's okay to take a risk. It can be scary and the unknowns and it can be very uncomfortable, but it is okay. And and a lot of times if you do it and you know your heart is calling you to do it, it will work out. I agree. And adding on to that, I think it was very much so the same for me even moving to Houston that um, I think one of the things is too, is that when you understand that it's clear for you, everybody won't understand it. Um, And yeah, and it was just a lot of people that was just like, well, why would you go there? Or how do we, how do we still get, stay connected? And as you said, being from small town Lexington, I think it's a thing that people don't do well with distance. Like they don't know 
how to stay connected. They don't know how to, <laughs> you know, do any of that as far as exploring. It's just like, well, why right. would you do that? Or what's over the, there? The thought never pops up to say, you know, you can come to where I'm at, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> the highway goes. <laughs> Both ways. But you know, they always want you to come back. And it's like, no, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> um, which, like, did you, did I, I don't, I was going to be a joke, but I'm like, the way that you've hit these points, you are hitting on like all the questions and stuff that I have too. I'm like, did I accidentally send you the questions before? Because <laughs> 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 the next question was, um, how did you, how did your upbringing shape your ideas on playing it safe or taking a risk? Which we just kind of tapped into a little bit, but. I, I definitely think that my upbringing taught me how to love people without judgment, without uh, condition. And it taught me to accept people as they, as they are, you know, no matter who they are or what they bring to the table. I really feel like family taught me that. And so it helped me as I explored the world to get to know many different people. Like for, yeah, I say it quite often. Um, I hate labels. I hate when people get labeled. Because we, we as an individual are not necessarily those labels. Right. And if you can't see beyond that, you're never going to get to know me as a person. And so with our grandmother, I love the way she, she just, it didn't matter what was going on in the family or what she had done or didn't do. She loved you anyway. And I think it had that mindset enabled me to meet so many wonderful people from different countries and nations and cultures. And that just really helped my life to blossom in ways that, you know, sometimes I, I still um, don't realize the impact that others have had in my life until until it happens, you know. No, definitely. And again, just recapping on that, too, I think it's definitely a thing. I think for me, um, I think because we did see a lot of them play everything safe all the time and not to say that they didn't experience growth or they didn't experience great things in their lives but you know I, I do believe that as I say like with each generation things change you want more you do more um, than the last generation um, but it was just for where we did see them for me it's like I think that also pushed me to be an even bigger risk taker um, to just be like, no, what is on the other side of this? Um, mm -hmm. um, like I always tell my best friend, um, Jeremy, that it's funny how, um, you know, our cousins, Brenda, them that live in Charlotte, that we never saw them growing up unless they came to Lexington. And I remember when I first moved to Charlotte and I realized it was, it was only like 45 minutes away. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, Y'all used to act like Charlotte was Atlanta. Like it was five or 10 hours away. We never, for me growing I never experienced. Like I know that, like even with, on my dad's side, we have family who lives in Kannapolis and Concord. Like that was as far as we would go when we were younger. Like we didn't really start breaking out into more until like DJ and Casey and I and them, we started driving and stuff. And it was like, oh, it's a, like, uh, the movie it's a whole new world like it's a whole bunch of stuff out here that we just didn't right. know about and Same thing for me um moving back to north carolina and the area that i'm in and you know sometimes my husband will say like you know you do you know anything about this area and i'm like we didn't come over here when i was growing up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't know anything about um much of north carolina except for where i grew up and so we it's crazy because I, I did grow up in North Carolina, but I didn't experience the state. I just kind of experienced the little cities that we kind of grew up in, and and, mm -hmm. and that is true. We we didn't we didn't come out of that pocket of space growing up. Yeah, and maybe it was too safe for us. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and, and that's what I was essentially saying. It's like I think that's what pushed me to that point of like I'm just gonna go and do because. 
But as you said, like we were literally didn't know anything outside of Lexington, Salisbury, Winston, Thomasville. Like, <laughs> and then life, is, um, life is changing also because you got to think a lot of the the jobs and the factories and things like that began to change. So the true. things that our parents had um, at their disposal, those things were slowly dissipating in that area. Yeah. And then as we're you know as we're coming of age. We're going from encyclopedias to the internet all of a sudden. So the way to take that risk was a little different because we could research it in a way that we never could before. Yeah. You know, we could look into things that maybe, you know, our parents would pretty much have to pull out a map and just take a, a real risk and a chance. Right. And going, <laughs> where you can you can look up London all day and videos and YouTube and ask people and, and, and get a lot more information than you could have. And that may have played a role too in their, um, in the safety factor of, of how they lived and, and kind of staying close to home and staying uh, close to family. No, and I, I can definitely see that, and I can see that being a thing. And I think for me, I know I'm not the youngest current child, but being of one of the younger in the um, one of the younger grandchildren that was like um, in the generation of like hanging out at our grandma's house and stuff all the time when we were very, very close knit. I think that also was a thing that played out for them. I think. By the time I was born, because I think my mom had me at like 30, 32, um, something like that. So as I also think about that, I think they were already into a lot of that transition of where they were no longer taking risk and starting to play it safe because they did start to have families then. And um, I think it's just a thing, too, is you get older and you recognize that realization that you're not the only one getting older. Everybody else is getting older, too. So right. it's like that kind of brings you in. And I think that to that i think it played very well for us because we did have a very close family growing up that we and you know we still do um when we need to come together and things like that but just being that thing that i don't think if they weren't in those spaces maybe we wouldn't have had those moments of how we grew up in the summers and all those things of just being in my mom's house all the time definitely um, and, and and to kind of flip that perspective um, I'm sure if we ask them, well, did you all take risk? I'm sure that they they did. It just looked different than yeah. the risk that we took. So um, that would be a good question to maybe ask our parents. You know, do you feel like you took risk as a as a young person, or you know, in, in your life as um, as it pertains to how you lived your life? And I'm sure that they they did. I I think that it just is going to sound very different than what we're discussing today i'm sure i'm sure no that i'm probably i think i might have that conversation this week um and see <laughs> just to see what that answer is um one other question i didn't have listed that i thought about which is with where you are now with being a realtor and getting involved in real estate how do you feel safety and risk come into play in that field, whether it's being a realtor or being a client that's looking for a property or just how do you feel like safety and risk balance into, into that? Oh, wow. Every day I see it um, with the market today is still a seller's market, which pretty much means that, you know, the sellers can put their home on the market and get a, a really good penny for it. And the buyers are the one that's, that's taking the huge risk of buying that property and, and um, hoping that that property is going to be worth what they pay for it. And um, so the buyers in this market are the ones I would say are definitely taking the risk um, today. And, and those risks can be a lot of things like because they are, the inventory is really low right now for homes, whether it's new homes or existing homes. And so people are paying way over list price for the homes and due diligence. You know, they're, they're paying out tens of thousands of dollars in due diligence trying to get into a home. And so that's a huge risk you take because if the market shifts and um, you paid um, 50 Forty, fifty thousand dollars more for the home than than what it was actually worth. Then maybe later it may not even be worth that. So it's definitely a risk in that. Um, but there's also a safety factor as well in the sense that 
you don't have to rent anymore because rent is rising as well. Um, so why rent when you can buy, right? So yeah. you could possibly purchase a home and, and the safety in that is cheaper than rent. It's your home. You can do what you please with it and you don't have to worry about the, um, the mortgage rate rising. Now, one other factor with real estate is that it can be risky with going out with buyers. Um, you know, we try to take as many safety precautions as we can as realtors. Um, but you could, you know, someone could try to attack you in a home or anything um, when you get on site. And so it's very important to be careful and watch your back when you're going out, um, especially if you're going to go um, show a property or view land or whatever you're doing and you don't know that individual. Um, so our firm, my firm, the firm that I work for, they um, they have they we have classes all the time and training about how to remain safe. Um, but there is always a risk. You can take on a client, too, that um, <laughs> that could just be um, not listening to your advice. Yeah. And then they get upset with you and, and you know, they complain. And, and so that can be risky as well. So I think life is it's a balance, isn't it? You know, of yeah, risk yeah. and safety <laughs> in many different facets. Absolutely. Um, I didn't even think about it. I mean, I thought about it. I guess it's just those things that you think of, but it really doesn't um, fully register until you either know someone or it's yourself that's in it. It's like... Yeah, the safety things of going out with these people, looking at houses and homes, and you don't know anything about them. They don't know anything about you. And it's like, okay, but I'm still friendly and nice and come on, you know? So it uh -huh. is a thing. So I definitely, it's a great point to make as well. I'm definitely glad that they have ongoing training for you guys for that too, because it's very important. So cool. Um, well, that's all I had for today. Did you have any? else you wanted to throw in or any questions or comments you had or anything um i did want to add you know like i said uh life in general can be risky um you can you can try to play it as safe as possible um and and some people um, may feel like well i don't take risk and somewhere you do you know somewhere you do just like a risky person may you know a person that may feel like they live more on edge um, they play it safe as well. I just think it's a balance across the board in, in yeah. everything. Understanding who you are as a person, what you like, what you don't like, um, any kind of unhealed situations and dysfunction that you may have. I think once you really, as I get older, um, I realize that the more that I know me, the better I can make a decision. Because, you know, it's just, if I know who I am and I know what I what I want, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard the saying, you know what you don't want a lot of times before you know what you want. Yeah. And so I know what I don't want. You know, I don't want to be um, in certain situations and I have to kind of evaluate the plan, right? And, and make sure that I may not be able to fulfill see everything, you know, dot all the I's and cross all the T's. But if I can come up with a good enough plan to say, okay, this is good enough that I'm willing to move forward in it, um, then why not? Because sometimes a risk is, is, is necessary. So I would encourage anyone listening that if, if you have a, a goal or a plan like I know you're trying to move to London and I think that is awesome. And I think you should do it um, because that, that's an experience that you, you're only going to get by physically experiencing it. Right. And I think you, it will change your life in, a, in ways that you can't anticipate right now. And why not? <laughs> and why right. not? You know, no, I agree. You only live once. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. No, and, and I, I had I pause because it is a thing that it's like that is the part that is pushing me, and I know that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. But I'm putting time frames and things on it now. That it's like by this date, I'm planning. Um, but it is a thing, as you said, it's just about exploring, and I think the greatest part in what you said too is when you know yourself, you know what you want. 
and you know what you don't want. And I think that is a vital part of even playing into the questions of safety versus risk is you know what you can handle and you know what you can't when you know yourself. Um, and as you said earlier too, just allowing intuition and allowing spirit to lead you and all of that is definitely the key point in that too. So that's, uh, I'm trying not to be emotional today, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was, that was a very great point. And I, I love the way you summed it all up for sure. That was really good. So. Well, thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining. I was just about to say that is our thank you and wrapping it up on today. Um, thank you for being a part. And, and I just reached out just very not long ago, maybe like a week or two ago to start trying to plan. So I appreciate you to be a part and to jump in and help me kick this off and be here to share your thoughts and your energy and all that. So I appreciate it. Um, so just following up, um, you guys, you can follow me. Um, I am the head over the PEP plan um, as a life coach. And aside from that, I'm also a recording artist and singer performer at Daytrail. It's all on Instagram. You can also follow Renee on Instagram as well at Real Agent Lucas. Um, is there anything else you want to let them know about this new journey of being a realtor or anything you want to add in? Um, just continue to follow your dreams. I mean, um, you know, it's never too late. You're never too old. If that's something that's been any hard to do, then do it. You know, you only live once. So um, I just became an agent uh, a few months back and um, the work is picking up and I'm enjoying it. And I've always wanted to do it, but life didn't yield me that opportunity. Um, so whatever your, is, your heart is set on, then uh, see if you can make it happen for yourself. There is. I'm not even going to try to add anything to that. So thank y'all for joining today. Uh, feel free to like, share, comment, send it to somebody who you, you may think will enjoy and need this conversation. But that's it for us. Signing off today. Much love and peace.